Let's receive our evening offering. I want to teach you some things tonight that have to do with the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Let's look at Luke chapter 8 to begin with. Verse 1, it came to pass afterward that he, Jesus, went throughout every city and village preaching, showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the twelve were with him. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Now here are three prominent women that went with him throughout every city and village where he was preaching and showing, you see there, and showing the glad tidings. Three prominent women that had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. So he had with him three prominent women that had been healed of infirmities and evil spirits. All right? Now, we know what Jesus preached because in, in the fourth chapter of Luke, 18th verse, he stood up, found the place where it was written, 61st chapter of Isaiah and said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach. And the scripture said, he proclaimed that, or he preached that throughout all Judea. So he preached that same sermon, the blessing of the Lord, the blessing of Abraham. Nobody had ever heard it. All they heard was the law. He came preaching the blessing of Abraham, and you're the seed of Abraham. You're blessed and didn't know it. Oh, oh. And they wondered at the grace words that proceeded out of his mouth. And these three women gave their testimonies. Can you see it? I mean, he's preaching and these women standing up and showing, read again there what it said, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. He was preaching and they were testifying. And the blessing of the Lord would just fall all over the place. They thought, wow, look at this. It, it, look, look who they are, man. I mean, we, we've been told God wouldn't have anything to do with any one of those three women. But look, but look at that. They've been healed. Evil spirits left their lives. Look at them. Look at those women standing up there. I mean, they're, they're bright as sunshine. Whoa, glory to God. And great, marvelous, and wonderful things happen. Amen. Now, he began to preach then. And you come on down, and he began to talk about a sower went out to sow seed. Now, notice this in verse 10. And he said... Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And he's talking about the mystery of seed time and harvest, the mystery of the hundredfold return. Now, who was the you? Just the 12? No, 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 no. Back up. Back up to where we began. Look at that again. 
throughout every city and village, preaching, showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him, and certain women, and Susanna, and many others which ministered to him of their substance. Glory to God. He had partners with him. He had people that had joined themselves to his ministry. They were sowing money into what he was doing. And he turned around and said to them, now, now, hey, folks, this is huge. He turned around and said, it is given to you to know. It is given to you to know. You have come to me and I am giving what I have to you. And it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. The mystery of the hundredfold the mysteries of divine health, the mysteries of seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things being added to you right in the middle of all that turmoil out there where they're all running around, you know, <laughs> like somebody left the door open on the chicken house, man, and all of them trying to find something. <laughs> and here we are. You know, we just kind of cadillac along. <laughs> just believe in God. You know, just get up right in the middle of everything and go to Texas for a believer's convention. Go to church for six days, all day and all night. And the devil do his best to make you sick, make the kids sick, break down everything he can to try to keep you from coming, just to keep you from hearing what I'm telling you right now. Amen. But you can tell him, are you a liar and the father of it? I'm going, praise God. It has been given unto me to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Too bad, Mr. Devil, you can't understand a thing we're saying. Because <laughs> you don't know. And won't ever know. Amen. Angels don't know everything. Devils don't know anything. And the scripture says, the manifold wisdom of God is made known to principalities and powers. See, principalities and powers are not all devils. Angels come under principalities and powers. Angelic, there's two thirds of them didn't fall but principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and wicked spirits in heavenly places. They don't know anything. The angels learn the manifold wisdom of God through the church. We find it out, they find it out. Amen. You missed a chance to shout right there. Mm -mm. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful to be in the know? <laughs> I happen to know something. I know some things. There are some things I'm not guessing about. I know in whom I have believed. I know the covenant of the name of Jesus. I know the name of the Lord, his authority. I know him. Amen. Amen. And the power of his resurrection. Oh, glory. There's some things we know. And the devil comes running in there and says, yeah, but now you're not going to get it this time. And you just laugh and say, <laughs> Oh, Mr. Devil, don't you wish you knew what I know? <laughs> Glory to God. What are you laughing at? I'm laughing at you, stupid. Come in here and tell me I'm not going to get it when Jesus already got it for me 2,000 years ago. And I happen to be given inside information 
on the kingdom. Amen. I have a top secret clearance in the kingdom of God. And I'm going to leak some secrets to you tonight. <laughs> yeah, because we on the inside. We've got inside information. Hallelujah. Come on now. I tell you, there are some things coming forth in this place between now and this time Saturday night. My, 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 my. Oh, 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 those of you that are planning on going home Wednesday, uh, you might want to rethink that plan. It's up to you. Now, <laughs> I would like for you to turn with me now to the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Luke. And let's demonstrate this. It came to pass as the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, saw two ships standing by the lake. The fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. N-E-T-S. How do you do that, Keith? What is it? Nets. Uh, yeah, I learned that from Keith Moore. Nets. Now, when you see that, that means, what did he say? <laughs> Go back and read it again. This is important. They were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. <laughs> now, when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets. S. Say it. Nets. Again. Nets. You got it. Now, for a draft or a draw, Simon answering said unto him, Rabbi, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Now, at this point, he knew nothing of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. He didn't know anything. He had seen Jesus in operation. He just got through healing his mother-in-law in a meeting in Peter's house. And everybody in town came up to his back door. He saw all that, but he didn't understand any of it. He's just kind of <laughs> like you and I would have been, you know, if that had happened to us before we knew God or before, before we knew anything about the word or anything, we'd just kind of been standing there, you know. Oh, 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 oh. That's the way he was. He had no, no spiritual insight. Later, he said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Where'd he get that? Jesus said he got it from the heavenly father. Now, that's because he had been with Jesus. He was there a few chapters later when Jesus said, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the hundredfold. Now, he's experiencing the mystery of the hundredfold and doesn't understand it. All he understands is working all night. He doesn't understand the blessing at all. He's not been taught the blessing. He's been taught the law. All right, you with me now? Jesus said, Nets. Simon answering said unto him, Rabbi, we toiled. Well, now he revealed what he knew right then. We toiled all night and have taken nothing nevertheless at your word. Now, don't, don't let the, the uh, standard English version translation throw you off there. He's not honoring the word because it's the word of God. He said, 
I'm going to take you fishing just because you want to go. Now, don't expect to catch anything. I know you don't know nothing about fishing, but I am a professional fisherman. And I just wanted you to know that we worked all night long, didn't catch anything. Now, he didn't say this out loud, but I ain't throwing all, I just got through washing these nets. Now, I'm not messing these things up again just because this preacher wants to go fishing. But I'll let you go out there and throw it a time or two and we'll come home and I can go for breakfast. Because he's a fisherman. He knows fishing. He knows this lake. He knows zip about the kingdom of God. <laughs> so I will let down the net tie. No S. One net. One. Not net. One. Now, let's say you had, uh, what, 25, maybe 30 nets, several for your boat. And you, you remember he had a number of people working with him. His partners in the fishing business. They all had nets in their boats. I don't, I don't know how many of that would turn out to be, but it, but it would be uh, a lot of nets. They worked all night long. They had to clean those nets and those things are heavy and they're hard to clean. A lot of work to clean those things. Now, if that was you, which net would you throw out there if you know good and well there ain't nothing going to get in it? Some old rotten thing is laying up under the seat of the boat. Been there for two years. Who cares? Can't catch nothing in the daytime out here anyway. Throw it out there two or three times. Let's go have something to eat or something. My, my wife's waiting on me. I've been up all night long and I'm tired of this. He was not pressing in hearing the word. He only heard the word secondhand and heard a few hallelujahs here and there. Are you with me? He did not yet, the, my whole point, what I want you to catch on to, he did not yet have any insight into the kingdom of God's mysteries. They're not mysteries when you live in them. No, they're not mysterious. Not when you know the answer. But they are mysterious when you've been raised in another system. Amen. Amen. Well, we, we see it a lot here in the United States because we're a nation of, of immigrants. People come into the United States, particularly those that come to the United States under asylum from, from uh, some other form of, of hard government of some kind. And it takes a while to get where you can live free. We were on television in uh, Eastern Europe for a long time before uh, the uh, Soviet Union fell and all that. And one family that uh, I, I became acquainted with, and particularly through their son, and <laughs> when, when communism fell and his nation became free, he called in the whole family. He said, now listen, we have to watch the Copeland's broadcast very carefully because we don't know how to live free and they do. So we have to hear that. And they sent their son to the United States to learn how to live free. Now see, it'd be a mystery. It'd be a mystery. We were preaching in the Ukraine and we were preaching in a place in the opera house, praise God, only in the basement. There wasn't nobody singing because that's where the KGB used to take the people. And during the opera, these people disappeared. <laughs> yeah, ugly place. And we hold a meeting in that place, man. Glory to God, just having all kinds of big fun. 
And the place is just shouting and praising God and we're singing songs and the guys that are standing on the doors are so scared, man. They don't know what to do because it hadn't been but a few days ago you get killed for doing what we're doing. They didn't know what to do. They locked the doors. We say, hey man, don't lock the door. You, are you locking them in or locking them out? I mean, what, what are you doing? <laughs> don't lock the door. <sighs> well, some of them could hardly stand it. This was a mystery to them. No mystery to us. Right. Right. Because we were raised free. Right. You understand? Yeah. But now at this time, this is a mystery to Peter. Man, I hate it. And he, he is not going this direction. So what happens? Well, you know what happened. <laughs> when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their net broke. Now, isn't this amazing? That's the only net we have record of that broke. Huh? They beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they would come and have them. They came and filled both ships so they began to sink. Their nets didn't break. They were glad to bring those other nets. Amen. Oh, every fish in the Galilee has ganged up around this boat and Peter's only got one old rotten net. <laughs> Man, no wonder, he's, no wonder he was so upset. He, he, he knew better in his heart to do that. Because he knew Jesus what was a godly rabbi. He knew, he saw things he'd never even heard of before. That's the reason he was astonished and all that were with him of the draft of fishes. And so what happened? Well, Peter saw it. He fell down at Jesus' knees, couldn't get to his feet, his knee deep in fish, saying, get away from me. I'm a sinful man. He knew he had done a contemptible thing. He brought a flawed sacrifice to a holy man of God, and he knew it. And it, it hit him hard. He said, get away from me. See, sin consciousness wants to get away from anything that's holy. But a righteousness consciousness said, come here to me. Oh, you're my father. Yeah. Amen. Can you see? Now, look with me at Matthew chapter 17. Hallelujah. Look at the 24th verse. When they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money or tax money came to Peter and said, does not your master pay tribute or pay city taxes? He said, yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, or in other words, Jesus said something before Peter even had time to open his mouth. He didn't even get a chance to tell him about what they had, the question they had asked him. Jesus prevented him saying, what do you think, Simon, of whom do the kings of the earth take custom of tribute, of their own children or of strangers? Peter said, of strangers. Jesus said to him, then are the children free, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, you go to the sea, cast in a hook, take up the fish that first comes up, and when you have opened his mouth, you'll find a piece of money. Take and give unto them for me and thee. Now, what did Peter say? Nothing. <laughs> now, what do you think he would have said if Jesus had told him that over there on that first day, he'd have said, Mister, what you been drinking? You want me to go? He didn't say nothing about even putting any bait on the hook. They just throw in the hook. The fish will get on it. The right one, the one with the money. He would have said, Oh, well, 
Allah. Oh, wow. But now after this time, he had begun to gain insight into the mysteries of the kingdom. And he had been taught that Jesus only said what he heard his father say. And that it was the father that dwelleth within. He does the work. I'll be right back, boss, with the money. Where are you going? I'm going down to the river. <laughs> I'm going down to the lake. What are you going to do? I'm going to get the tax money. No question here. He had some understanding. He knew if he do what Jesus told him to do. Huh? You remember Jesus told them, don't take anything with you. You leave behind everything. Don't go home. Even, don't, go, don't even go get a spare shirt. See there, Jesus wanted them all to be poor. That wouldn't have been poor. That would have been poor. No clothes for three years? No, no. Jesus said, come on, boys. Now, y'all going to work for me. Amen. And at the close, he said, when I ask you to come without bringing purse, or clothes. Did you lack anything? They said, nothing, Lord. We lack nothing. <sighs> Even if we had to go get our tax money out of the lake, we lacked nothing. Remember the rich young ruler? Huh? Knew nothing of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Didn't know anything about the Word of God either. Thought he did, but he didn't. Right. Jesus said the same words to him that he said to all the other of these apostles. Give what you, sell what you have, give it to the poor. Come follow me. Now, now this is just me talking. But it's me after about 45 years of this. <laughs> Would this not have been a wonderful replacement for Judas? The treasurer? Huh? Guy knew something about kingdom finances. Jesus said he did. Come, follow me. Lay it all aside and come on, follow me. Now, would that have meant that this man was going to walk off from all of this wealth and have nothing ever more again? No, he would have asked him the same thing. When I told you to sell what you had and give to the poor, have you lacked anything? Oh, he would have said, oh, no, Lord, I've lacked nothing. Glory to God. God would have met his needs on his level. He would have lacked nothing. Well, why did he turn around and walk off greed? He did not know. He had no insight into the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Now, after, after gaining some insight into the mysteries of the kingdom of God, going fishing without any bait and getting money out of a fish's mouth mm -hmm. and catching more fish, he said the first fish, don't get excited and throw all the rest of them back. Keep, keep, keep on getting me. Hey, get the tax money and supper. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Don't quit till they quit biting, brother. <laughs> you know, just keep bringing them in. Yeah, glory to God. Yes. But see, that didn't bother him at all. Had no question about it. He just learned that whatever Jesus tells you to do, go do it because it's going to come out. You're going to be way ahead when you go do what the master tells you to go do. Can you say amen? amen? Hey, let me tell you something. That's the way you get out of debt. That's the way you get healed. That's the way you stand off the devil. That's the way you, that's, that's the way you move and function in this life. Glory to God. You've got an ear open to God. You, we found out from all kinds of scripture this morning, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Amen. My sheep 
know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. That means he is speaking to his sheep. Amen. Amen. And I have my ear inclined unto his sayings. <laughs> Glory. Amen. Sir, I am yours to command. Amen. Amen. I'll say what you tell me to say and I'll do what you show me to do. Amen. Amen. Now, he may tell you something at first sounds kind of off the wall. <laughs> well, you have, a, you have an absolute right to ask him right. what that is. See, I, I can say, sir, when were you born of a virgin? Where were you born of a virgin? How were you born of a virgin? But I know for a fact you were born of a virgin. Amen. 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 I don't start off, were you born of a virgin? No, I already found that out in the book. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a learner. I'm a student. Amen. Amen. Now, I know I'm going to go get that money out of that fish's mouth. You got any particular spot on that lake you suggest I go fish? <laughs> or are you going to take care of that yourself? Amen. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. How, how do you get this way? Spending time with him. Spending time with him. Amen. 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 Spending time with in the Word with the Holy Spirit listening to His voice. Sir, I open my heart and I open my mind to hear your voice. Teach me, train me, show me. I'm here to understand. I want to obey. Amen. He will protect you I, I, I was walking down the street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, many, many years ago. I was, I was preaching a meeting, and I heard the word of the Lord. I got a direct assignment from him. I knew it was him. And I'm walking along there, and suddenly I, I heard something else that I knew didn't really line up with the word, at least what I knew about it. And I just stopped where I was, right there in town. I just stopped on the sidewalk. I said, sir. And I, I repeated to him what I heard. I said, now, I am ready, willing to obey. That last part of that didn't sound right to me. It sounded like you, but it went crosswise of of what I already know about you from the Word. There's something wrong with that. So, with your permission, sir, I'm going to delay carrying out what I believe I heard you say for me to do until I'm sure of that last part and until I see it in the written Word because I walk and act on your Word. Amen. Amen. Now you think he got on me for that? No, no. Right, just standing right there where he was, where, where I was. I heard it right, right down in here where every believer can hear the voice of God. That's where you train to listen is right in here. I, I heard that very plainly. He said, you're to be commended for that. And he said, have no care of it. I'll take care of it and I'll show you. So I just went on. It wasn't, but just a little while later, he said, now, here's what you heard. And I heard it again. I knew it was him. Now, he said, now, here's what the imitator said. And I heard that. And it was plainly not the voice of God, even though it sounded a whole lot like it. And he said, now here's the scripture that that violates. Now, whoa, yeah, now that's what I'm looking for, see. Have you ever heard someone that's uh, an impersonator or um, someone that imitates, uh, um, you know, a movie personality or something, you say, boy, he sounds just like that guy, until you hear the real one. Right. 
And particularly if you can hear them side by side, you don't sound nothing like him. But look, by himself he did. And that's the way this was. And the Lord said, you will, not, you will not follow that voice ever again. Now I've had the devil try to pull that on me down later. And I said, no, 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 no. You ain't conning me into that. No, nope, no, nope, no. I've already heard you. You're a liar and the father of it and I'll not follow you. Amen. Amen. And then you do the next four or five minutes, he'll try to shame you. <laughs> well, now, and try to bring up all kinds of stuff. Now, you know you haven't been fasting like you should. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, I've been thinking about that. I know you've been thinking about it. He's been putting it in your mind. <laughs> now, just, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I ain't listening to that. Amen. Amen. Don't ever, don't ever fall for shame. Jesus bore your shame. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Don't ever fall for that. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight. By faith, Father, we receive your divine gift of insight and knowledge of the kingdom of God and its mysteries. For we live in this kingdom. Your kingdom has come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We receive it, sir, in Jesus' name. Now say, it, I have it. Amen. It's been given to me, given to, me. to know the mysteries of the kingdom. The of the kingdom. I, have I have insight. I have inside information. Have inside information. And all of it is inside the book. And the book is inside me. And the book is inside me. Now give the Lord praise and thanksgiving for it. Hallelujah. Father, we receive this evening's offering and we thank you for it. I'm asking you, sir, to reveal to each one of us what our part of this offering is, our part of the finances of this convention and of this ministry and its outreaches. As we hear, we obey. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.